um, just bear with me a second while I pull this up. Um, but what I'm going to do is to just set out um, just some observations and reflections in terms of what's going on at the moment, what are some of the key challenges. And it's always hard to do that when you stand in an audience predominantly full of people that are either patients or carers um, of somebody with, with ME. Um, but I'm just going to give you some of the messages that are coming through from the work that we do. I'm also then going to say um, a little bit about our plans for the future. And I'm also going to be unveiling something that nobody else has seen yet. So I hope it's going to, to, to work. So I'm going to start off by um, just talking a bit about the, the current issues. I think one of the, the, the challenges for me sort of coming into to work in this field was, was the amount of mystery that exists the lack of knowledge that we have, and although research is moving at quite a momentum at the moment, and we're starting to learn more and more and gather more insight, there's still a lot that we don't know. And that inevitably leads to a number of myths. And it's fantastic to hear the work that Gina's doing, for example, that's identifying the bioenergetics, um, uh, you know, in the, in the muscle cells, etc., that is giving the insight and the evidence base that's going to help us move forward. One of the really big challenges, though, I think, and I, I don't need to tell you, are the, the myths that exist within the general public, the myths that exist with, um, with GPs and with others. And despite having some fantastic GPs, one of the things that we hear week in, week out is, my GP has told me this isn't a real illness. And that's simply not good enough. The lack of public awareness um, that I mentioned earlier on is, um, it, it, you know, continues. And I think there are some real challenges when you look at what's happening in the media, and the two examples where we've written over the last couple of months. The first one is Jack Whitehall, the comedian, who um, made a very negative remark in his book that he wrote with his father uh, about um, an aunt, I think it was, with, with Emmy, and um, really making, you know, very sort of adding to that negative stereotype. The other one was um, on Stella. I've never seen Stella, but somebody um, told us that, so again, there was a very negative remark about somebody claiming benefits because they had any and they were just putting it on. We have written to both. Um, we did get a response um, from Stella's producers, who were very, very apologetic. We've yet to hear from Jack Whitehall, so I'm not outing that, um, because this is now going, the, the, the presentations will go public. It's simply not good enough, and to not respond is not good enough, and we will continue to, to, to follow that up. I don't need to tell you about all the challenges um, in terms of the, the welfare system and we know that the impact of welfare reform is continuing um, today, not just for people with ME but for the um, millions and millions of disabled people that are affected, very negatively affected in comparison to, to others. We know that there are continuing challenges with the, um, the ESA, the Work Capability Assessment, um, with employment support and we know that with the rollout of personal independence payments that's going to create even more challenges for individuals. Please do come in. Do, do come in, find a seat. <laughs> we also heard um, earlier, I can't remember if it was earlier this week or last week, about the new health and work service. And that's due to be launched later this year for those individuals who are off sick um, for more than four weeks. And they'll be offered fitness to work advice, medical care advice, etc. It won't be compulsory, but it does concern me if those people that are offering advice don't have an understanding about any, it's going to become problematic. And it may not start off compulsory, but there is a question mark about where that's going to go. So we hope it's going to be implemented in the best possible way. We hope that it's going to provide a support for people, but we need to see what's going to happen. We want to understand a little bit more about how it's going to be rolled out. We're also waiting to hear about the government's response to Paul Litchfield's fourth and penultimate review of the work capability assessment. And um, we, um, you may have read on our website and um, on the ME Association's website the minutes from the last all-party parliamentary group on ME when um, Mike Penning, the uh, Minister of State for Disabled People, came along and talked to us. So we're very keen to hear what comes out um, from, from that. The other thing that we know is that there's the introduction of universal credit. And for those of you who are coming along to the workshop later on, we'll be talking a little bit about that. And we also saw the, um, the Carers UK inquiry report that came out in terms of carers and, and family finance. And it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking to see the impact for people. Many of you sitting here will know that, that firsthand. But we have to be able to use that information better than we already do. 
to raise public awareness and to raise awareness in terms of the impact for, for people with any for people with fluctuating conditions. Um, again, uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier on was in relation to service provision. And um, some of you again may have seen the blog that I wrote last week. We're just undertaking a large um, scale national survey looking at health, welfare and employment. And um, I just, I've spent several of my evenings inputting the hard copy uh, responses that we had so that we can have it all electronic and produce the, the analysis that we need. And I was really, really saddened to see time and time and time again people scoring the service that they've received, whether it be social care, whether it be health, GPs, etc., very low. And there are some fantastic professionals out there. There are some fantastic GP surgeries, and we need to celebrate that, but we also need to do something to challenge the, the, the poor service that people are experiencing. The other thing that I was quite shocked by was the um, average age of carers that was 65. In the small sample that I was inputting, and I can't don't want to make any generalisations, the eldest person was 87, the youngest was 10. And so there is something that I think organisationally we need to be doing in relation to carers, and I'd be really interested um, to, to hear your thoughts about that. So if you've got any thoughts or feedback, please put them down on, on the piece of paper on your, your table or ask questions later on. The other thing that I was um, saddened, and again not surprised, but saddened to see, the number of people that referred to cognitive behavioural therapy and graded exercise therapy that are severely ill patients that are being offered that as a treatment. We know that there is no evidence base for that. There are lots of questions about the evidence base that exists. I'm not going to go into that um, today. But actually, there is something that's not getting through in terms of treatments and the understanding around evidence base. We need to do more about that. We need research to look at those individuals that are going to respond to exercise and those that aren't. And I think some of the work that Gina and Julia and others are doing in Newcastle and in other areas should actually help us gain better insights because at the moment it's not good enough. And then um, lastly, uh, in terms of research, uh, some of you will know that we've got the UK Research Collaborative that launched uh, last year. It is a group of people that come together voluntarily. There is no funding that is going into that, so it is naturally slow in getting going. I'm not sure if I should say that publicly, but we are all you know, putting in the effort to, to try and get that moving. There will be a science conference in September this year in Bristol, and there will be patients, there will be a session for patients and researchers together. So there's a lot of work going in to pull that together at the moment. The other thing that we're doing is, is to look at how we can bring researchers together to collaborate together. And we've got a series of meetings planned this year where we will have the um, Medical Research Council funded <coughs> researchers coming together to look at what more they could do to learn from each other, to collaborate together. It's a start. It's not, you know, we've got an awful lot more to do, but it, we are starting to see things moving there. You can also join as associate members. It's free to become an associate member. We'll send you copies of the minutes. We'll send you updates. We'll send you information when there are calls out for people to join research projects. And you will get invites to things like the science conference. So if you do want to join, all of the information is on the Action for ME website. The forms are there. You just need to send those in. And actually, they come to me to take to, to the board. The other thing that we've um, seen within research, and we're about to produce the um, report from our funded work with Northumbria University uh, around sleep. And it's really interesting if anybody um, saw the films from our AGM, the, the, the information that Jason Ellis, Professor Jason Ellis presented there about the work that they've been doing. They undertook um, a sleep study over three nights. I'm just checking my notes. It's a three-night sleep study. And they also um, undertook a qualitative study, talking to people about their experiences of sleep. And they've actually identified um, four different groupings of sleep disturbances, difficulties. What that then helps them to do in the longer term is to treat people more effectively, depending on the, the phenotype, the grouping, uh, the difficulties of, of sleep that they have. So that report will be um, released and published fairly soon, and again will be available on our, our website. We're funding a, a research project in Sheffield, and we're just waiting the, for the report from that. Again, that's looking at cognitive dysfunction and using the um, fMRI scanner to
to, to look at what's going on inside the brain. And um, so we're waiting for the outcome of that. And again, that will be shared so that you can all read um, to see how the, mon the money that we invested in that research project has, has been spent. We've also got the Biobank, which is um, a, a bank of samples, blood samples and clinical data from people that have been assessed um, that fit the specific criteria that they're using. Um, and those so samples will be available for researchers. Again, more information is available on our website. They are recruiting people from very specific areas because of the logistics, of set times, um, they have to get blood to the blood bank and all of those kinds of things that logistically it's very difficult to, to manage. So they're not able to just openly recruit, um, but again, information is there. And then also there's the disease register that we're, we're funding and uh, you will be able to register with that and provide information that again can then be utilised anonymously for researchers and we should have some information over the next few weeks that tells you um, how you can register should you want to be involved in that. So what does, what does that mean for us um, in terms of our, our work? Well as um, many of you will know in May last year we launched our statement of strategic intent and that really set out our promises to people affected by ME. We want to be much clearer and much more transparent about the work that we're doing and how we're using the, the funding and the donations that we, we receive. We established our new vision and mission and we set five priorities, health, uh, employment, welfare, awareness and understanding and research. And that will drive our work now through to 2016. And we also um, uh, made some amendments to, to our value base. So here's, here's our vision and um, mission, and you've got that in your pack, I'm not going to, to read that out to you. But what I am going to do is just tell you a little bit more about the work that we're now going to be doing over the, the next couple of um, years. So we are just about um, to, to produce our inform and empower and support inform and influence strategy. Can't think of a snappier title at um, this, this point. But um, that will be going live in April, and I'm going to, going to give you a snapshot of this. It's going to our board on um, Thursday. I apologise for how it looks. Um, this isn't in your pack because I only inserted it last night. It's very hot off the press. But actually what um, we want to do is to, to set out the kind of key areas that we're going to work with. Like most charities, we are struggling with resources. We have limited capacity. We have less than 12 full-time equivalent staff. There's far too much for us to do. So we need to be quite specific about what we can and can't do. But actually our goal in terms of those, those four areas, that we, we want integrated care and support. We want people affected by ME to get the support they need when they need it. And that's, um, that fits across our priorities. So we, in, in the strategy that will become available, and it will be going out for consultation over the next few weeks, we're setting out how we're going to reach more than 300,000 people over the next couple of years, how we're actually going to tighten up on the information uh, that we provide to make sure that things like our welfare rights fact sheets are up to date and that we respond to, to the needs that, um, that's identified. We also um, want to specifically look at how we can be more creative with the limited resources that we've, um, that we've got. And um, we have a number of pilot projects that we're looking at setting up. One of them specifically is an employment support project. Now we know that there are a number of people with ME that are not able to work. They're physically not able to work. That's, that's obvious because of the nature of the illness. But there are some people that actually um, need support and leaving work well, and others where their health is improved, wanting to, to get back into work. And we're looking at developing an integrated service based in the health service with um, employment specialists, with high decon in, um, with, with others, to make sure that people get the support that they need and that we can work directly with employers so that, um, you know, that we can get the set up as right as it, it can be. We're also looking at um, other projects like the Patients Know Best pilot, and again, some of you might have seen information about that on our, our website and the consultation that we've undertaken. And that's thinking about how um, patient records can be used in a way to drive patient care with patients as active partners um, with, with the health professionals. And there's a lot of work that, that we're looking at there. And if you want to know more, there's more, more on our website, or I'm happy to to tell you a bit more um, later on during the breaks. So that's our, our um, Empower Support Inform and Influence strategy. And um, if you do want to, um, if you do want to have an opportunity to feed into that, 
Over the next week or so, there will be information up on our, our website, and you'll have an opportunity to comment and see the, the details. The next um, thing that um, to identify is, is research, and again, um, at our AGM, I unveiled our research strategy. There's a bit of a theme here, there's a same sort of um, overview, and again, you're not going to be able to read all of that, and I apologise for that. But again, it's about being really specific about what we will do and what we won't do. How do we use funding? We don't use funding for research at the moment where animals are involved. That's a question I've been asked probably six or seven times um, over the last couple of months. We do not fund research uh, where animals are used, and we have no plans to do that. And we wouldn't do that without consulting with our supporting members. So it actually it spells that out in terms of what we don't do. We are funding five biomedical research projects at the moment, and we have a call out uh, that, that closed recently, and we're just going through the peer review process. And we hope to be able to announce some more funding um, for, for research projects over the, the next few months. So again, that sets out um, our plans and hopefully it helps us to be more transparent in the work that we're doing. My colleagues um, in the office will say that um, they're probably bored of hearing me talk about collaboration and I think my chair at uh, the AGM said collaboration is my middle name. I passionately believe that we cannot you know, deal with the challenges that Emmy put in front of us unless we work together. There are lots of us that will have different views, different opinions, and that's, that's okay, we're not going to change that. But diversity of views actually is quite helpful because we need, we need to create that spark. We need to be able to argue and to debate and we need to find common ground. We cannot, we cannot deal with the challenges if we're in our silos and, and working alone. And it's fantastic to see something like today we're working with AIM, with co-funding research projects with the ME Association and ME Research UK. We've got things like the Scottish Collaborative, the Research Collaborative. We're working with um, people affected with ME in a completely different way. And so we, we have just launched our patient and carer reference group because um, as an organisation we strongly believe that we need to be listening better and we need to be working better in partnership with the people that we're there to, to essentially serve. And there is a, that you have in your packs, there's the, the link to the website um, where you can find out more about the patient and carer reference group. There are no terms of reference yet because we'll do that as a group. This isn't about us as an organisation saying this is how we want it to be and this is what we're going to do. It's about us as a group saying this is how we can better work together and how we can learn from each other's um, experience. We're also about to set up a series of conference calls specifically focused around health education. I was chatting to a lady from the Liverpool Support Group a couple of months ago about the work they're doing in Liverpool. They've got some great ideas, they're doing some fantastic things. And yet she said, but I don't know what the people down the support group down the road are doing. It's not because we don't necessarily talk to each other, we just, we're really struggling to actually keep the support groups going. We're all doing this in a voluntary capacity, we're all doing this um, with illness. And I'm sure some of you um, here will, will have a sense of that and the work that you're doing in, in Sheffield and others. And so we're just trying to find ways of bringing people together so that we can share experience, share knowledge and identify what works well and support each other. It's a big challenge, as I mentioned earlier on. We need to increase the income that we've got. We've had a deficit budget in the organisation for the last couple of years. We can't have that again um, next year. And we need to think more creatively about how to bring more money in to support the, the work that we're doing in a climate where we know that, there, that money is, um, is not there. And all of the work that we'll be doing um, going forward will fit within our, our value base. And if you think we're not doing something that fits with that value base, contact me. I'm really open to hearing um, you know, people's comments and thoughts about that. We want to do the best that we can. We won't always get it right, and there will be differing opinions about how we're doing. That's always going to be the way, but we will listen and we will respond. So for more information, I'm hoping that all of you here will have seen our on the online ME Centre, but the um, website address is there. You can find out a lot more about the research projects that we're funding, etc., that I mentioned earlier. If you haven't yet um, filled in your survey response, we you know others that would be willing to do that. We've had over 2,000 responses. I think we'll be near the 3,000 mark. I'm really hoping that we will. It's, it's not necessarily throwing up anything new, but it gives us a really up-to-date evidence base that we can, um, we can use to, to lobby with and to underpin some of our work that we're doing. It is a long survey, it needs to be. You can do it in short bursts, um, and people, you know, others can do it for you. 
but the closing date is Friday. Um, so, and you can only do it online now because, unless you've got a hard copy already. And Sarah has got some, so if you wanted to do one and send that in, do get that in quite quickly. And if you do want to contact me individually, I will respond to everybody. There's nobody else that um, picks up my emails and deals with them. I deal with all of them. And I really do like to engage with people. So I do encourage you to, to contact me and be slightly patient with um, how long it takes me to respond um, if I'm a bit busy. But um, I really do want to be able to engage more with you. Thank you very much.